Namaste, angels. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that I'm back. And I'm not even sure what I'm going to call this, but um, Spirit has a message for us, and I have to share it. So, first, all right, let me start here. A couple of you guys have asked me, like, how can we get, you know, how can we do more? How can we spread your message? People have asked me, like, how can we spread your message? Like, I, people have said to me, like, I feel that those of us who are really in tune with it are already watching and are already subscribing. So how can we spread it to other people to make sure that they, you know, that they hear your message, which is God's message? And I said, like, I don't know. I mean, I share your concern and it saddens me when I see people going the wrong way. You know, and I have to presume that when I see that, that they don't watch me because then they know certain things to avoid, certain beings to avoid. But, you know, I'm like, I have to trust that those who should be will be guided by spirit, you know, to view when it's time for them to view. And, you know, or I'll be guided to reach out to somebody and say, please view, you know, or maybe one of you will. And that's how I responded to them. I said, you know, of course, you guys can always share. You can share among people that you know are of like minds. You know, the kind of people Archangel Sandalphon talks about. I've just been um, against, at least up until now, sharing my message widely because it, there's definitely some people who for whom it you know it is not to whom it does not belong it does not apply it does not belong and it's not for sale that's been my problem the message is not for sale i'm not for sale god is not for sale so how do we do this you know when i have large companies approaching me saying Oh, we've watched your videos. We'd love to produce them for you. You know, like make a whole big thing. And then they'd be, I mean, they could be huge and I could be huge. But what happens to the message then? Does it get watered down? Does it get manipulated? Do I get manipulated? Over money? Money I don't need because the universe will take care of me if I, even if I decline that offer? So I've been stuck. But then today, I don't know, I had this thought, feeling that maybe I had been like the four of pentacles with the message too. I mean, like there has to be balance. Like maybe I'm being too clingy, too holding the message too tight. And I don't know where the medium is, you know, the happy medium. I'm not sure. But I guess, again, we'd have to begin with you guys. You can share the message with, you know, who you believe the message is for. Okay, because in my preference, I prefer that, you know, angels of the light receive it. And I don't care if, if other people don't receive it. I don't care if angels of the dark don't receive it. Let them seek it. If they decide that they want to come to the light, let them seek the message. I don't need it handed to them. I don't need their energy funking up my, you know, channel, my space, my sphere. But I do want to help as many people as we can. And <clears throat> to that end, I got a message from God. But first, before I tell you that, I had to tell you. Well, I woke up again thinking about Andromeda and the distance between the Earth and the constellations in the sky that form a triangle and represent God. Something called Elil, Elil, 
that spirit was telling me, and I, I lost a lot of it. Of course, like when I wake up, it goes woof. But I was thinking about this yesterday. It popped into my head, and then I guess I dreamed of it, and I woke up thinking about it. Some constellation that used to be called Elil, which in my dream I remember thinking, oh, Lilith, this is Lilith is back. But no, well, well, maybe, but no. <laughs> At the same time, no. Um, it turned out to be Elohim. And that's the L that I kept seeing. L, L, L. Elohim was one of these stars or one of these constellations that makes up this triangle that I saw in my dream. And there were others. They're like there's three that I guess is the Trinity, maybe. That would make sense. And it sort of, at least I believe, aligns with the pyramids here. Now, so do the pyramids on Mars. And I brought that up a while back, too. And then a little bit after I said it, a young child, a 16-year-old, I think, from Mexico, discovered something on Mars using coordinates similar to the, the ones that I had rattled off. I'm not saying he got them from me, but he maybe he had a, a similar epiphany, um, revelation, and you know, did something different with his and went and sought out this space on Mars or had somebody, you know, pinpoint it for him. I never really went back to that. But anyway, um, that took me to today is George's birthday. And then I said, wait a minute, George is or found Seth's wife, and I've been saying Earth found Seth's wife is 717. I'm like, but that's true. Because spirit wouldn't have put that in my head. Then I realized, yes, she is a Lilith. Yes, she is playing a role of Earth found Seth's wife. But the people closest to me are of the highest vibrations of these beings. So she is trumped by one of my best and closest friends whose birthday is on 717. The mother of one, one of the children whose birthday is 911. One of my goddaughters. The friend that I told you we've been, you know, close since high school, but I had to tell her the reason my phone is not ringing aloud or I'm not allowed to answer it, I miss your call every single time, is because Spirit is saying you are dark. She's carrying the most Lilith. And George's birthday is falling into the period of this other Lilith that I mentioned the other day. Other period of Lilith. Remember I said we left Neptune and we walked right into Lilith. And that's why many of us are having, you know, negative thoughts and we feel like we're going backwards. I know I had to like, you know, ward off thoughts and, you know, what was some, some I guess, supposed to be some sort of temptation to go backward. And that's because it is a Lilith's birthday right now, too. George. So she's playing the role whereas she got, you know, in between Earthbound Osiris and I, but my friend in Atlanta, where I got broads. This is hard because, you know, we were really close or are really close. But she, what I'm being shown is that she is, not that she necessarily messed up any of my relationships. But how I was describing with Lilith that, you know, she could destroy three marriages, like three marriages and all kinds of stuff. Like she's had her own problem marriages and been married more than once. Um... I can see 
what this is talking about. So why am I having to share this? Because again, the same way we've been discovering with Michael and Stephen and Mary and, you know, Anthony. We're all living out these roles and in some cases multiple roles. Like you could be living out, you know, Metatron and Michael at the same time. You know, so maybe you're constantly writing you know, like a scribe and you're being Metatron or you're constantly on the computer, you know, because I think I feel that that's Metatron it's too. You know, that's just another language, but he's an inventor of language. You know, you're constantly doing something like that. And then at the same time, you know, you come through with the sword when you have to. You're that type of person as well. We're playing both roles or like I, how I described the other day, how we're being, you know, both Hercules and... You know, these that um, the God from India, that prince and that, you know, folklore or, you know, we're being both Mary and Andromeda. Um, you know, we're being all of these things at once at different vibrations. And so I had to clarify that um, not that I was. Wrong. In saying that it was Earthbound Sets wife, wife um, birthday, seven seventeen, um, because that was a, that was a channel's message that just came out of me when this woman approached me. So that was definitely what Spirit wanted me to say, and it is the truth. It's just not the one I was I was wrong about who um, that person was who held the highest vibration of Lilith in my life. That's what I was wrong about, and I probably didn't want to face it. Because again, this is this other one is one of my closest friends, one of my oldest friends. And I had even told you guys that, you know, I realized that my goddaughter's birthday was 9-11 a long time ago. And I never mentioned that. Like I was blocking that out too. Like maybe I just didn't want to address the fact that there was darkness, you know, in my own cipher, <laughs> so to speak. Um, but we will we will handle this. We will pray on this and we will meditate on it and heal ourselves with crystals and oils and incense and prayer, prayer works, all that kind of stuff. We'll be fine. Um, but I had to share with you in case that happens in your own life. Now, more importantly, <laughs> um, more importantly for everyone, I should say. Uh, whereas not everybody is going to experience Lilith in that way. So that may not apply to everyone, but th this does. How do I go into this? Okay, so when I went to take, well, I pretty much haven't been to sleep. I woke up yesterday, like seven o'clock in the morning, and I've pretty much been awake ever since. And I'm not tired. I'm fine. Uh, so maybe I'll end up crashing later. <laughs> um... But I had left the cards on the table and I finally went to take them up and I had them all pretty much in the boxes. And then I started to do something else and I didn't even know what. I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? And then when I stopped and sort of asked myself that question, I don't believe aloud. I just think I just asked it in my head. But next thing I know, spirit is telling me, you're a watchman. And I said, oh, I'm a watchman. We're all watchmen. It's like, you know, if I'm, you know, a horseman, we're all horsemen. Everyone who watches me, who resonates with me. So Spirit said, you know, like, look up watchmen in the Bible. I did. What comes up? Ezekiel 33. I start hearing, we want easy. And I read this. Ezekiel 33. Renewal of Ezekiel's call as watchman. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, speak to your people and say to them, when I bring the sword against the land and the people of the land choose one of their men and make him their watchman and he sees the sword coming against the land and blows the trumpet to warn the people, then if anyone hears the trumpet but does not heed the warning and the sword comes and takes their life, 
their blood will be on their own head. Since they heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not heed the warning, their blood will be on their own head. If they had heeded the warning, they would have been saved. They would have saved themselves. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people and the sword comes and takes someone's life, that person's life will be taken because of their sins. But I will hold the watchman accountable for their blood. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade them from their ways. That wicked person will die for their sin and I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do warn the wicked person to turn from their ways and they do not do so they will die for their sin though you yourself will be saved son of man say to the israelites this is what you are saying our offenses and sins weigh us down and we are wasting away because of them how then can we live say to them as surely as i live declares the sovereign lord i take no pleasure in the death of the wicked but rather that they turn from their sins, their ways of life. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Therefore, son of man, say to your people, if someone who is righteous disobeys, that person's former righteousness will count for nothing. And if someone who is wicked repents, that person's former, former wickedness will not bring condemnation. The righteous person who sins will not be allowed to live even though they were formerly righteous. If I tell a righteous person that they will surely live, but then they trust in their righteousness and do evil, none of the righteous things that person has done will be remembered. They will die for the evil they have done. And I, if I say to a wicked person, you will surely die, but they turn away from their sin and do what is just and right. If they give back what they took in pledge for a loan, return what they have stolen, follow the decrees that I, that give life and do no evil. That person will surely live. They will not die. None of the sins that person has committed will be remembered against them. They have done what is just and right they will surely live. Yet your people say the way of the Lord is not just, but it is their way that is not just. If a righteous person turns from their righteousness and does evil, they will die for it. If a wicked person turns away from their wickedness and does what is just and right, they will live by doing so. Yet you Israelites say the way of the Lord is not just, but I will judge each of you according to your own ways. And that was Ezekiel 33, 1 through 18 or 9. Now, which is 6, 9, by the way, um, that number. Um, this is what I've been saying, okay? That the Lord has told me that those who repent will be forgiven. There are some people that don't want to be saved. They will not be. There are people who are being saved, but they have to do the works. I keep talking about the works. We can't just sit around or, you know, and not put the effort in. That's the works to ensure that we remain on path and that we, you know, remain righteous. And for those of us who watch, to go back to what I started with in trying to figure out, am I getting the message out to enough people or am I like holding it back too tight? Are, you know, you guys helping me to share it? If you're receiving it and you believe it 
and you're not sharing it with those you feel it should be shared with, then that's wrong because you're a watchman. You're a watchman. All of us who know what's going on are watchmen. Like the song that he had me go over last week, the audio too, during the, the um, reading and talk about Harvey Milk. The audio too. He said, since you understood, would you, since you understand what's going on, would you, you know, be so kind as to go forward and share it with the others and to also stay on path. So I had to get this message out right away, although I wasn't planning on coming here. And that's how it ties back to how my day started, <laughs> the, the thoughts of my morning. Now, what is this? This is a reading that they had me do on myself in the interim. Um, because my twin called me. I missed the call. I was in another room and I had my phone on do not disturb because I had been up making those videos earlier this morning and I never took do not disturb off. So, and they told me to share this. The overall, I guess, cause this could apply to you guys too, or somebody out there. The overall, um, energy was codependency. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. He showed up as two cards. I didn't realize there were two cards there. The King of Air, who, you know, speaks his mind with confidence. And the Magician, who's ready and has all the resources he needs or the ability to manifest them to do whatever he wants. Life is magical. And atop that was Express Your Love. Underneath that, the aid of fire. So events moving at a fast pace, delays are over, many things are happening at once, and this often means like communication going back and forth, uh, which would make sense with his phone call. Atop that is forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moment. And I'm going, hmm, okay. I don't know what I've done that he has to forgive. In my mind, I've never disrespected him. In my mind. At least not intentionally. So that would be why it's, you know, in my mind. I've never been the one to, you know, end uh, contact or anything. Never, never, none of that. I've always been receptive to him when he's come back. So I don't know what he needs to forgive me for. But as I said during uh, one of the installments of the Healing the Divine Masculine, I don't know how far back uh, this forgiving and learning goes. You know, I don't know. You know, maybe it's like the depths of the soul. Maybe it's the soul that has to forgive. Maybe it's for a past life. Maybe it's some, for something I did to him before in another life. Or if it is in this life, you know, maybe it's for something I did before I re remembered that we were twins. Before he remembered we were twins. Maybe his soul remembers. She hurt me. Or, you know, she married this other man. That hurt me. Even though I didn't, I didn't even know her. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. But it's there. Forgiving and learning. Forgiving and learning atop the eight of um, fire. The eight of wands. And in his subconscious, the nine of air, which is expecting the worst, self-fulfilling prophecies. So when I called him back, it went straight to voicemail. He probably said, like, no, she didn't answer. Like, screw her. Like, you know, fuck her and blocked me or whatever. Um, because he was thinking the worst, right? Expecting the worst, self-fulfilling prophecies. But atop that is, it is safe for you to love. I got the page of fire. And atop that, chemistry. Then the queen of earth, make time for those around you. Take a sensible approach, deal with challenging uh, or ta challenges in a kind and understanding manner and atop that honeymoon. And we know that this can be honeymoon 
or it can just be spending time together, uh, enjoy the bliss of holiday time together. Maybe this means the 4th of July. That's coming up, right? That's the holiday time that's near us. Maybe it just means hanging out, or maybe it means the honey moon, which would be now, which would not be the 4th of July, because that's the new moon. This is the honey moon, the uh, full moon in Sagittarius. So that had me thinking. Then my subconscious, the night of Earth, okay, time to buckle down and get things done, honor your commitments, guardian angels with you, and heart-to-heart -heart conversations, honestly discuss your feelings with each other. In the center, atop the three of water, a celebration, a wedding, graduation, or birth, birth announcement, the need to have more fun. And again, it's, it's uh, baby earthbound Lilith's birthday today. So maybe that's the celebration, although I have no desire or interest in partaking in that. I don't know what the celebration is yet. But whatever it is, it probably has nothing to do with that because the topic is finances and careers. So maybe we'll be celebrating some sort of joint venture together, um, something having to do with our new business. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. That's crowning us. I'm not sure why. Underneath that is reconciliation. Someone from your past is returning to your life atop the ten of earth. A very happy family life. Financial security. Finding magic in the little things in life. So that's nice to have underneath the uh, finances and career card. And of course reconciliation is nice to have anywhere. The fact that it's right here in the center is beautiful. That's from Archangel Michael. Thank you, Archangel Michael. And at our feet, the Six of Water, which is a past life relationship card, of course. Uh, memories from your history or childhood. Issues regarding children, potentially, or romanticized in the past. And atop that is new love. A new person has stirred your romantic feelings. In addition to that, I kept, um, when I was shuffling, I kept getting Archangel Metatron as Zero, the, um, the dreamer, or the fool, and soulmate i just decided not to pull them out and see if they would instead wait to see if they would show up here and they didn't but i know that they're a message because they were repeated over and over and over all right so this way we have express your love reconciliation heart to heart conversations this way we have chemistry reconciliation it's safe for you to love finances and career reconciliation new love forgiving and learning reconciliation honeymoon and from this column I thought to myself, if he does not call me back, because perhaps this, I'm going to go across the water to see him. I'm going to get in my boat like this angel and go across the water. My boat has wheels, though, and it's going to be on a bridge. I'm going to be the queen of earth that's underneath this honeymoon card and make time for those around me, take a sensible approach and deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner. I understand the challenge. He doesn't know how to, you know, talk to me. The fact that I didn't answer is a problem. You know, that, that like let some of the wind out of his sails. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. So now I will be the fool, the zero, the dreamer, and if I don't hear from him again, if he doesn't get the Eight of Wands or King of Air um, or Magician strength behind him again by, I don't know, maybe five, six today when I'm done doing some other stuff, I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to go to Queens. So I'll let you guys know how that turns out if, you know, it, if at all. Oh, and I really just wanted to tell you to spread the message, um, whatever that means and however you're able to do that, because it's been made clear now that we have to do that, that, you know, we're not safe either if we don't do what we're supposed to do. Okay. Sorry to be a downer, a Debbie downer, but that is the message. So please help. Thank you guys. Namaste angels.